testing. All right. Weren't you blessed? You know, uh, <clears throat> we want to thank you for coming. I know that you could have chosen other churches, but you came here. You know, this reminds me, um, I was a school teacher. Prior to becoming a pastor, I taught your grades. I taught high school, junior high. I was a principal. And uh, those, that's many years back, but this brought so many memories, good memories. I truly enjoyed um, teaching and being part of the school system. But uh, God had his other plan. I got a call to ministry and uh, sometime I'll let the church know what, how that came about, but it's a blessing to have you, and want to thank you once again. Thank the teacher that's here with us, and uh, thank you so much. We praise God. <clears throat> so this morning, the title, as you can see, the title of my message, I'm going to put my T here. I have problems with allergies, so once in a while I'll be sipping here. Somebody asked, what do you have in there? It's just tea. <laughs> Dandelion tea. They say it's good for our allergies, so. <laughs> but anyway, the title of our message this morning is going to be Living with Giants. You know, um, I don't know if you ever, when, I'm, when I talk about giants, I'm referring to uh, someone over seven feet. I had the opportunity, when I was uh, 12 years of age, the Harlem Globetrotters came into town. These were, this was a basketball team, uh, African-American uh, basketball team. And um, they took us to this game to watch the Harlem Globetrotters. After the game was over, we had the opportunity to um, see the players. And I had never seen someone that tall. I was 12 years old, and I remember they had a player by the name of Will Chamberlain. I mean, yeah, Will Chamberlain. He was 7'1". He had just graduated from the University of Kansas. And I remember standing in front of him, looking up, along with other kids. Is there an echo on this? Okay. And I remember looking up. And um, in our neighborhood... There was no one that size. And so I remember he even felt a little uncomfortable with us kids looking up. Uh, we were looking at him like a weird bird, you know. I mean, never seen somebody that tall. So, um, but he doesn't compare to some of the other modern giants. For example, Robert Wadlow. He grew to be this man here in the middle. Those are average guys. He grew to be 8'11", almost 9 feet. <clears throat> and um, he's the tallest man recorded in the uh, Guinness Book of, Book, uh, Book of Records. He was known as the giant from Illinois, and he weighed 485 pounds. He had a shoe size of 37. <clears throat> he had a monster shoe. <clears throat> he was very well known in his day. He traveled with the uh, Wrigley Circus, and he went all over the country. He was well known, and um, but he died at the age of 22. He got a foot infection. Back then, they didn't have penicillin, so he had this foot infection, and um, for his funeral, for his funeral, 40,000 people attended. His casket, they say, was 10 feet. His coffin was 10 feet. And it took 12 strong men to carry it. Now, the tallest woman that's existed, how tall do you think she was? She was 8 feet 2 inches. This, that's her here. That's a normal woman there next to her. Zing Jinlin. And uh, she, over, she was a towering lady. But you know what? These modern giants, they do not compare to the giants that David, that David um, 
confronted in his days. How tall were his giants? The giants that David confronted. According to, I looked at some of the commentaries, and there's different heights. Adam and Clark says nine feet, nine inches. Gray and, and Adam say 10 feet. SDA commentary says 10.5. You know, all we know, all we know is that these warriors that David confronted, they were powerful. They were powerful men because they were warriors and they were, they were armed from head to toe. And so the Bible tells us, and this is one of the points I want to make. The Bible tells us that David confronted giants throughout his life. Not once, but throughout his life, he confronted giants. He confronted giants when he was a teenager. Yes, the first giant that David killed is the one that most people remember, and that was Goliath. Yes. And we remember Goliath because his defeat of Goliath was so spectacular <clears throat> that it transformed the life of a shepherd boy that used to work out in the fields to a national hero. And so as a teenager, he confronted Goliath, <clears throat> thanks to the good Lord. And as an adult, you know, after defeating Goliath, King Saul Named, <clears throat> named David to be the captain of the army. And so he met a lot of giants, mostly with the Philistines. And um, there's one giant that was physically different than the rest of the giants. And he was a menace. I mean, this, this giant was big and different. The Bible says in 2 Samuel chapter 21, verse 20, Yet again, there was a war in Gath where there was a man of great stature who had six fingers on each hand, six toes on each foot, 24 in number. And he also was born to the giant. The giant, there was a line of giants. And so all through his life, David confronted giants. Lastly, as an elderly man, he thought he was already tired, he was old. Many years later, Israel once again was fighting with the Philistines, was at war with the Philistines. And um, he was no longer a young man. He had been an adult, he had been a king, and now he was an old, tired warrior. And the Bible tells us that when they went out to war against the Philistines, that there was a giant by the name of Ishbanab. He almost killed David. 2 Samuel 21, verses 15 through 17 says this. Once again, there was a battle between the Philistines and Israel. David went down with his men to fight against the Philistines. And he became exhausted. And Ishbanab, one of the descendants of Rapha, whose bronze spearhead weighed 300 shackles and who was armed with a new sword, said he would kill David. <clears throat> but Abishai, son of Sariah, came to David's rescue. That was his nephew. Came to his rescue. He struck the Philistine down and killed him. Then David's men swore to him, saying, Never again will you go out with us to battle, so that the lamp of Israel will not be extinguished. <clears throat> you know, people that read the story of, of David, they generally think of the first giant, which was Goliath. Few recognize that David throughout his life, as a young man to his old age, he confronted giants, <clears throat> menacing giants, warriors throughout his life, not just Goliath. And um, 
in our lives, your life and my life. Giants are part of our life. We meet giants. Now, have you ever thought that giants are real? Giants are not a figment of our imagination. They're not something we dream up. What would qualify for a giant in our age? <clears throat> Today, David faced giants throughout his life. And you and me, you and I, are going to face giants. Now, we're not going to face a literal giant. I'm not talking about literal giants. How then does this story fit our lives? What are some of the giants that we're going to face? Let's not look around us. Oh, our greatest giants are internal. Did you catch that? Our greatest giants are internal. <clears throat> they are within us. And they appear when we least expect them. There is a giant of resentment. When a person has resentment. There's, and you could probably add to this list. There's a giant of fear. When fear comes upon us for whatever situation. There is a giant of loneliness. There is a giant of guilt and shame for something a person has done in the past. Or there is a giant of worry. Some people worry. But like they say, worry is like a rocking chair. It gets you nowhere. There's also the giant of discouragement. When you get down, something happens that gets you down. <clears throat> There's also the giant of fear, of failure. And this is a big one. Failure in your work, failure in your home, raising your chil children. That's a giant. There's a giant of jealousy and envy. There's a giant of depression, despair, the giant of bitterness, of pride. These giants come up, and we're going to see how we deal with these giants. The giant of hopelessness. I don't know if you've been there. There's a giant of bitterness. There's a giant of self selfishness and greed. Everything this way, like the rake. It's all about me. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, there's a giant of doubt and unbelief. And we see David's men. We see David, his soldiers facing this giant. And there's a giant of anger. Losing your cool. Becoming angry. And there is a giant of self-condemnation. And there's a giant of a critical spirit. These are giants that we have to face throughout our lives. You know, usually these giants defeat us much faster than outer giants, outer things, things on the outside. <clears throat> Let me ask you something. What is Satan using as a giant to stop you from becoming the person, the Christian that God wants you to be? Do you have resentment in your heart towards someone who did something wrong, uh, something that has happened in your past? Or are you running away from something that God has called you to do for him? Or <clears throat> are you facing marital or financial difficulties in your home? Or are you having trouble with guilt? Or shame that you feel because of something that happened in the past. These are giants. <clears throat> Has something taken place in your past that so disappointed you, so disappointed you, that you can't get over it, you can't put it behind you? <clears throat> it is it may be an impossible situation that you're going through at work, at school, at home. It may be a dream that seems unreachable. These are giants. Doubt is a big one. 
keeping on the fight of faith. <clears throat> Life is a journey. And keeping up the fight of faith, keeping our shield up. Before we can defeat our giants, what we find in the life of David, we find this, that there's obstacles. David wanted to fight the giant. He believed in God. He had faith in God. He wanted to face the giant, but there were doubters. The army, the Israelite army, didn't believe, didn't think that David could defeat Goliath. They saw this shepherd, a shepherd boy, and um, then they see this giant that would come out. For 40 days, he would come out twice a day and challenge them. So when they looked at David, and they looked at the uh, giant that is armed from head to toe, and they see uh, David with a slingshot, they said, oh, no. So there was a lot of doubters. And what else did David, uh, David encountered before he went out to meet the giant? He encountered criticism. He encountered criticism from those close to him, from his brother Eliab. His brother really went into him, really got into him. He said this, <clears throat> why have you come down here, talking to David, and with whom did you leave those few sheep in the desert? I know how conceited you are and how wicked your heart is. You came down only to watch the battle. <clears throat> That's hard. Your own family doesn't believe in you, then you can go out and fight that giant. I mean, and the other um, obstacle was the army, the Israelite army. They were cowards. You know, none of them wanted to go out, including Saul. They didn't want to go out and meet that giant. And then there was the obstacle of concern. And this was real. David had to overcome the obstacle of concern before he went out to meet the giant. King Saul didn't think that David had a chance. In his eyes, David was a kid. No chance in the world to defeat Goliath. He tells David, you're only a boy. And Goliath has been a fighting man from his youth. And so he had to meet these obstacles before he could go out. He knew, David knew in his heart that he could defeat the giant. But these concerns, these obstacles came into his life. <clears throat> A question I have as I was reading this story, why does God allow giants in our life, in our path? I read the list of giants, and there's others. There's a giant of immorality. And some refs will fight with that giant. But why God, does God allow them? You know, a soldier becomes a real man in battle. And we never grow up. We need the giants. We need the giants, struggles, trials to make us stronger. Yes. And you know, the giants won't leave us alone till we go, go out in other words, when we stand up to them. We see this in David's life. <clears throat> I mean, for 40 days, the giant would go out and challenge the army of Israel. And he didn't stop. He would go out two, days, time, two, uh, uh, two times a day. He didn't stop until David went down to the valley and fought that giant. That happens in our life. We need to meet up with those giants. We need to face them, but in the name of God, not on our own strength, because giants are going to be part of our life. They were part of David's life throughout his life, and they're going to be part of our life throughout our life, and they'll make us stronger. But you know what? <clears throat> Whenever we stand up to one of these giants, if it's resentment, if it's bitterness, whatever it is, in the name of God, 
miraculous things happen, like happened with David. Yes, David needed Goliath. Think of it this way. David needed Goliath. He didn't realize it, of course, at the time, that he needed Goliath. <clears throat> to fight Goliath, fighting Goliath was simply another, the next thing that God had put for him to do. But he needed Goliath. You know why? In order to gain the confidence of the people that he truly was qualified to be their leader, to be their king, the people had to know that the man they followed was worthy of their trust. And David proved that when he defeated Goliath. They said, this is our man. Now, <clears throat> So it might sound strange when we say we need giants in our life. But giants bring us closer to the Lord. When things are real peaceful, a lot of times we need these giants. And we need to ask the Lord. We go to the Lord. <clears throat> so they're there for our spiritual help. Now, <clears throat> excuse me. What gave David the courage and the confidence to fight Goliath? And this is where we get... This is how we learn how we can fight our giants. It's very important. This, we're entering this part now that is so important. He had to convince King Saul that he could go out and defeat Goliath. So what does he do? He does recall. He does recall. He remembers his past victories. The past victories that he had. David began to remember how God had taken care of him. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 36 and 37, it says, Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them because he has what? He has defied the armies of the living God, the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion. And the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. <clears throat> See, David kept, we could call it a spiritual file in his mind and his heart, of the things that the Lord had done for him. You know, I can see David listening to Saul, coming up with all reasons why he couldn't go out to face Goliath. David goes over to his filing cabin in his heart and mind. He looks under the B file. He remembers how God was with him. And God helped him to kill a bear. Then he goes to the L file. And he remembers how God helped him defeat a lion. So he does recall. <clears throat> and... Um, you know, we need to do the same. When these lions appear before us, <clears throat> the lions I've already talked about, when they come up, we need to do recall and remember past victories. I believe that it would do some good to back to our spiritual filing cabinet, which is in our heart, and pull up some files Pull up some files of what God has done for you, what he's done for me. Look under the H file. Think of what the hurt that you felt through an experience that you went through or you might be going through. Look under the H file, the hurt. Then think about the healing that God brought to your family. Physical healing, emotional healing. Spiritual healing. <clears throat> Look under the F file. Think of the failures in your life. The many times you missed the mark. The many times you, you sinned. You fell short. <clears throat> then think about the forgiveness that God gave you time and time again. God is a good God. Or Look under the D file. Think of the deep depression that you were in. You know, you were really down in the pits. You don't know how you got there, but you know one thing, 
But it was God that got you out of that pit, out of that depression. We should never forget, as Christians, what God has done for us in the past. As we look back over the circumstances and situations we've been through, <clears throat> we will discover that God was just preparing us to face giants that were still ahead. <clears throat> Remember this, if God gave you strength and victory in the past, he will give you strength and victory in the present. There might be someone here this morning that's facing one of these giants. And think back <clears throat> when God delivered you. And recall the facts of your victories. David's confidence, <clears throat> David's confidence rested in the God who had brought him through all these giants that he met in his life. David knew that his God was bigger, stronger, mightier than Goliath. <clears throat> There's a famous quote that we find in Life Sketches. It's a bell and white, and page 196. What does it say? We have nothing to fear for the future except as we shall forget the way the Lord has led us and his teachings in our present, in our <clears throat> teachings in our past history. So we need to do recall. Whenever you meet a giant, I don't know what you're going through today, but I'll tell you one thing. We all meet giants. These giants appear, and they challenge us. So we need to recall past victories. <clears throat> we need to have a unmovable faith in God like David. You know, as I was reading this story, <clears throat> the faith of David, you know, I heard a definition. I heard a definition of faith that has stayed with me. <clears throat> it goes like this. <clears throat> faith is belief plus unbelief. Faith is what? Belief and unbelief and acting on the belief part. You know, did David, David know something that, his, um, that Saul and the soldiers didn't know? Did David know something <clears throat> that they didn't know? No, he didn't. They also knew, the army, Saul, they also knew that God was great, he was mighty and powerful, that he was the Lord of hosts. They knew that. <clears throat> so it isn't just head knowledge. It has to do, it's more than that. Any one of those soldiers could have gone out and killed Goliath. Any one of them. If they were willing to take that first step and believe that the Lord could give them the victory. The difference between David and those other soldiers was not that he had faith and they had doubts or that they had doubts and he had none. <clears throat> Here's the difference. Follow me here. The difference is this. David acted on his belief and ignored his doubts. Did you get that? David acted on what? On his belief and ignored his doubts. While they, talking about the army, talking about King Saul, they acted on their doubts and ignored their belief, they ignored their faith. You know what? <clears throat> faith is not waiting for 100% assurance that you're going you're to do it. No, if you, <clears throat> if you do that, you're going to wait forever. Faith is seeing the giant, whatever it is in your life, understanding the odds, believing that God wants to defeat that giant, and then taking the first step of faith. Isaiah 41.10. You know, when we meet our giants, sometimes we're afraid. This is a beautiful promise to remember. <clears throat> Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed. In other words, don't be discouraged. For I am, with, I am your God. 
I will strengthen you. I will uphold you or help you. Some versions say, I will help you. And I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. God will come through for you. He'll come through for me because we're going to be, once again, David faced giants throughout his life. This is part of what they call sanctification. It's a work of a lifetime. We're going to meet giants. But we need to have recall. Remember God's victories in our life. We need to have this kind of faith. Yes. And if you do that, God's going to st- says, you know, you take that first step of faith, not because you think that you can do it, but because you know you can't. Therefore, you know that if the giant is defeated, if he goes down, whatever the giant is in your life, it is because God has done it through you. Yes, he gets the glory. <clears throat> you know, the reason that these stories are in the Bible, the reason these stories are there for, is to give us, to help us. You know, they're to give us faith. Faith in, in faith. And to face our giants that we're going to have in life. Yes. So, you know, another thing that David did. David faced Goliath in the name of the Lord. Not on his own. 1 Samuel 17, 45. David said to the Philistine, You come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you. In the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. I don't have to remind you. There's power in the name of God. You've experienced it. I've experienced it. There's power in his name. Yes, <clears throat> when you face your giant, when you face it, take time to call upon God. Don't go at it alone. There might be someone here this morning that's meeting one of these giants. In your life. Call on the name of the Lord. He will help you. <clears throat> you know, there's power in the name of Jesus. Yes. When you face your giant, you know, call on his name. It makes no difference, no difference what you are facing, what your giant is. And they're different for each one of us. I don't know what you're going through. But I know one thing, that there's power in the name of Jesus. There's power in the name of the Lord. Yes, you can defeat any giant that comes your way. You know why? Stronger is he that is in us than he who is in the world. If if we have that connection, you know, alone, we cannot defeat our inner giants. There's no way. Jesus is our only hope of defeating whatever giant you're facing today. Yes, there's power, the all-powerful name of the Lord. You know what? Because Jesus has defeated our biggest enemy. Who was our biggest enemy? Satan. He defeated him on the cross for you and for me. We're saved through grace, through what Jesus has done. His substitutionary death in your place and my place. We were supposed to die. He took our place. His life is important. Jesus' life. You know, <clears throat> he lived a perfect life. And he will, if you accept Jesus Christ, he will credit you with that perfect life. His victories become our victories. You will be declared righteous even though you're a work in progress. It's beautiful. And then comes the second part. Imparted righteousness. He comes to live in us to defeat giants in our life. To help us be victorious. So we need him. We need the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, he defeated the enemy. David recognized something very important. He recognized, <clears throat> excuse me, that the battle was not his, but God's. <clears throat> In 1 Samuel 17, 47, all those gathered here, he's talking about the armies, 
all those gathered here will know that it is not <clears throat> by sword or spear that the Lord saves. For the battle is who? The battle is the Lord's. Yes, the battle is the Lord's. And he will give all of you into our hands. <clears throat> if you're facing a giant this morning, one of these giants, you know, it's not your battle. It's the Lord's. He will help you through. So once again, <clears throat> remember, there's going to be obstacles. There's going to be doubters. And David's going to try to put doubt in you and people around you. But remember, remember that God, remember recall, remember God, how God has worked in your life in the past. Yes, and remember that <clears throat> you're going to have doubts, but remember that we have to act on the believe part, on the faith part, and God will come through. And remember, lastly, <clears throat> That there's power in the name of Jesus. There's power in his name. So we need to call upon him. We need to come. Jesus gave his life for us. And he wants to help us. He wants to help us make it through. And this morning, there might be someone here this morning that is facing a giant. I don't know what it is, but you know what it is. And God wants to give you the victory. And he wants to defeat that giant through you. But you have to believe, and he will do it. God will help you. So remember these points. There's going to be giants throughout your life. They were throughout David's life. But the thing, they make us stronger if we rely on God. So do recall, believe, and trust in the name of the Lord Almighty. God bless you.